from day one, one of the most important things for me is that people very often look at dietary fiber or fiber as an anti-nutrient. And I think we have to really understand that although it can be an anti-nutrient, that we have also the possibility to functionalize fiber, to make it work for us and for the animal. By doing that, that we can indeed increase uh, productivity, efficiency, animal welfare, and so on. So we have the opportunity of turning something that it might be anti-nutritional into something that is beneficial. So the, the current definition of dietary fiber is a dietary material that is not digested nor absorbed in the small intestine. And while it's important to understand that some components are behaving like that, the definition of dietary fiber itself, if you analyze dietary fiber, it gives you a number. But that number doesn't tell you anything about the sort of fiber, how it behaves, uh, and that sort of stuff. So, And that is what you need to know if you want to understand fiber, you need to go to individual fibers but also into the way they are structured in your fiber material and so on. If you're looking back it's so that fibers was all always considered as a negative component of the diet. It restricts the utilization of nutrients in the diets, both in, in, in pigs and poultry. Nowadays, we are looking on fibers as also a component of the diet that can influence the digestion and, and physiology of the different parts of the gastrointestinal tract and surely have also a great role to play, particularly in relation to the uh, microorgan or the microbiota that's in the last intestine. If you're looking on it in, in general for the whole production chains, uh, the important thing for, for, for nutritionists and also producers, that will be to optimize the, uh, the amount of fibers at the different age groups. Meaning that typically it's so that younger animals, they will not be able to handle quite as much of the fibers as older animals will.